Good morning, it's your crazy old coot here. How's it going, man? Okay, this is kind of like a two-part video. In the first part, we're going to be discussing the R5-2400G with an added 1050 Ti graphics card. So, I mean, this is why I recommend the 2400G because you can buy it, get it running, do what you want to do, and then save up and watch. And when you get a good deal on a graphics card, you buy the graphics card, you throw it in, and boom, you're off to the freaking races. These are just some quick tests just to show you the capabilities of the system. And we're going to start off, of course, with our favorite Cinebench. Multi-threaded score was 802. Always run monitor. So we know what's going on and the voltage was 1.44 we had 74 amps the temperature was 71 degrees c and we were able to hit 3.9 gigahertz on three cores and 3.8 gigahertz on one core and next we have heaven cinebench is cpu heaven is graphics we were able to do 68.9 frames per second average on heaven with a minimum of 21.4 and 143.4 max. And that was with high settings, no tessellation, and a 1920 by 1071 because we were kind of working in a window. So that's pretty good. I mean, a 1050 Ti is a beginning 1080p graphics card. It does the job well. It's not gonna give you 120 frames per second but it will do the job. It's like, to me, the 1050 Ti is where you really begin doing 1080p gaming. So we also did 1.43 volts at 54 amps. Okay, so quite a bit less amps because we weren't really driving the, the CPU in heaven. Uh, only 62 degrees C, and we were able to do 3.9 gigahertz on all four cores. Next we have Time Spy. And we have a Time Spy score of 2457 with a graphic score of 2327 and a CPU score of 3596. And our voltages was 1.45 volts at 74 amps at 75 degrees C. Obviously, you got Time Spy as a CPU and graphics thing, so we were pushing both, and we were able to hit 3.9 gigahertz on all four. Because why I do this is because this is set to auto, okay? So the CPU is scaling speeds as it's needed, and then okay. So next is Fire Strike, and we managed a score of 6,589 on Fire Strike with a graphics score of 7,553, a physics score of 10,111, and a combination score of 2,658. Uh, we again hit 1.44 volts at 70.7 .7 amps and a temperature of 67 degrees C. And we're running the Spire cooler here. Okay, just to let you know, it's a Spire cooler. It's not the stealth that came with it, and it's not a, really an add-on. It's just the next step AMD stock cooler. And we hit 3.9 gigahertz on all four cores. Okay, I just updated to the 4.70 BIOS, and this is the AB350M Pro 4. Okay, I stole it back for a little bit. So I, I ran a couple tests and it worked okay. I just wanted to show you a couple things in here because I want to set this up. Okay. So we're going to go into OC Tweaker. Now you see this is all, this has been set to auto. Okay. So everything I ran before this video that you saw was run on the last BIOS. Well, but it was all run on auto. Okay. So we're going to go in here and go into manual. 
And we're going to kick this up to 3900. And 1.45 volts is way, way, way too high. I'm going to go 1.3. Let's go 1.35. Okay. And we do want SMT enabled. Okay. Now that's probably why. Oh, yeah. So we want to go here to do this. Now I've overclocked this before. It overclocks great to DDR4 2933. What's this? No, we don't want to do that. We'll leave that in auto. Here we go. Mm -hmm. Dram voltage. You want to go to 1.35. Okay, where's SOC? That's interesting. Okay, so we're going to save changes and exit. Let's see if we can find that in Ryzen Master. It was in Ryzen Master before. <laughs> okay, let's see if those changes took. No. I'm going to update when I probably should. Okay, that's about right. Okay, that's good. Yes. Heavy editing on this thing. Can't still do change it in Ryzen Master. Let's see, we think we can. So if we do we want to apply and it's gonna to want to reboot. interesting now it shows it going to that mm -hmm. okay so now we'll go to hardware monitor Well, that scored a wee bit better. This looks good. That looks not too bad. See, we only got up to 81, so that should well below 100. 
but you see if you were doing this with a six core this would get up over a hundred so that looks good and um, let's do a quick one just fire strike and I, I won't play the intro Yeah, 1.4 volts. That's lovable. That's good. Ah, you see, even when you're on fixed, it will it will turbo a little bit because we got up to four four gigs here, and I had it set for 3.9, so it will turbo up from there. I also ran a uh, time spy test. The graphics score was 2,354. Now under the old one, it was 2,327. So that's graphic wise, of course the 1050 Ti didn't get changed, so it's gonna stay the same. CPU score, the way I've got it set up now, scored 4,259, and the old score was 3,596. 650 points higher? The big change there, of course, is I'm running 3.9 gigahertz on all four cores. Fixed. Sort of. We'll get into that. We were running just 1.4 volts to 82.1 amps versus 1.45 volts at 73.8 amps. So I like this a lot better. It seems to, 4.7 seems to keep the voltages down a little bit more. Probably got a better uh, calibration curve. Now the new one hit 80 degrees C, the old one hit 75 degrees C. Well, that's because I'm running it hotter, longer, harder, longer. The max was 3.9 gigahertz on all four cores new, and the minimum was 3.7 gigahertz. So even though you've got it fixed, the XFR still plays with it a little bit like we've seen. Under 
the old Ryzen's, when you set it, it stayed there. If you set it for 3.8 gigahertz, it stayed at 3.8 gigahertz. It didn't vary or do anything. So they made a change. So now with XFR, even if you fix it, XFR still works. Okay, it will slow it down when it's the CPU demand is is really low and it will speed it up when it's high. Now the old system, the using auto, it hit 3.9 gigahertz, but the minimum was like 1.2 gigahertz. So it scaled way back when the demand was in there. And that reflects on the CPU score. So this is your crazy old coot wishing you a good evening.